dihydroberberate. This thing is more popular than ever. Everybody's thinking of taking it for weight loss. There's Twitter influencers taking you to take it. There's other ones telling you not to take it. What's true? And what are the real scientific updates? We're starting now. Personally, I really like dihydroberberine. It's natural to a reasonable extent, as much as any supplement can be natural. It's found in roots like turmeric root. And there's a lot of really good studies for it. And I think as popular as berberine is, in my opinion, dihydroberberine is a lot better. There's a lot of great studies. In fact, I go really into depth about all the studies telling the specific differences between dihydroberberine and berberine. And I'll tell you right now what those differences are. The biggest thing is dihydroberberine is a slightly modified version of berberine that can cross your gut lining better than berberine. And then after it crosses, it goes back into berberine. Say about 70 or 80% of berberine is not absorbed through your gut lining and only 20% makes it through. Whereas dihydroberberine, the majority of it makes it through. So with the same dosage, you get about two to three times as much dihydroberberine crossing your gut lining. You end up with two to three times as much berberine in your blood. You can take much less, there's less side effects, and it has all the benefits of berberine otherwise. So for all intents and purposes, dihydroberberine is berberine. It just crosses your gut lining and you need to take much less of it. So as a result, if you're taking like one third less, if the price is relatively the same, and it kind of is, then you're paying a lot less and it's the much better option overall. Here is a detailed summary of the studies on dihydroberberine specifically. I think because we know what happens chemically from dihydroberberine to berberine, it's completely fair to also count the benefits of berberine and those studies rather than just the dihydroberberine studies. Let me know in the comments if that makes sense and I could definitely answer these questions. Sometimes that's a confusing topic for some people, but overall berberine was the one that's historically been used. So there's way more studies with much bigger numbers, but these are specific dihydroberberine studies because I think it's fair to talk about dihydroberberine studies in this video. Number one, dihydroberberine has improved blood sugar control. In 2010, in the journal Diabetes, a study was published with diabetic mice which were treated with dihydroberberine. The study lasted six weeks and mice treated with dihydroberberine showed much lower levels of blood sugar. Specifically, their blood sugar was 25% lower than the mice who did not take dihydroberberine and had the same diet. So dihydroberberine dropped it 25% and berberine itself only dropped it 15%. So there was a much better result with the berberine treated group of four mice. Again, it's not a human study. But number two, enhanced insulin sensitivity. In the journal Metabolism in 2010, there was a study with a diabetic mouse model and the effects of dihydroberberine. They basically gave dihydroberberine to mice for eight weeks and the mice exhibited a 35% improvement to insulin sensitivity. The glucose was much better taken up. This only had a 20% effect in berberine, almost twice as good an effect with dihydroberberine than berberine. Number three, cardiovascular health. The Journal of Cellular and Molecular Medicine did a study on dihydroberberine, and this research showed that animal models with hyperlipidemia, so that's fat in your blood, this did a study for 10 weeks and dihydroberberine had a 30% lower level in cholesterol and a 25% lower level in triglycerides, which is the fat. In contrast, this 30% improvement was only seen as a 20% improvement in the group that took just berberine. Berberine did not have as good a result as the dihydroberberine. Number four study, anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects. This was conducted in the Journal of Phytomedicine in 2018. The study assessed the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects of dihydroberberine and it found that there was a 40% improvement in inflammatory markers and a 50% improvement in antioxidant enzyme activities compared to the group who did not take dihydroberberine. That almost seems a little bit too good to be true. Again, small level studies, 
could be bigger. Here's the big one. Number five study, weight management. The journal Obesity in 2015 looked at obese mice treated with dihydroberberine for 12 weeks. Mice treated with dihydroberberine, and you know, mice are not humans, but they're mammals, you know. I was really scrounging and digging for all these dihydroberberine studies because again, this is an all natural treatment. And unfortunately, if you can't make millions or billions of dollars, like with some of the $1,000 a month injectable solutions, no one's really gonna fund studies for this. That's why there's so little studies on some of these natural supplements. But anyway, back to the study. Mice treated with dihydroberberine showed a 15% reduction in body weight and a 20% reduction in fat mass compared to a 10% reduction in body weight with the berberine only treated group. Whereas the normal group that did not take either, they did not have any improvement. Essentially, you had a 20% fat mass reduction with dihydroberberine and only a 12% fat mass reduction with the berberine group. Mice are not humans, but I'm gonna kinda cheat and redirect you to my berberine video where I go over every high level study on berberine. In my opinion, dihydroberberine has been studied so well that it gets converted to berberine. It's essentially the same thing, it's just better absorbed. That explains all these results. Dihydroberberine for weight loss studies. The first study is dihydroberberine and weight loss. The title of the study is dihydroberberine as a potent modulator of obesity and metabolic syndrome. This was published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism in 2018. There were 100 participants. Their BMI was about 28 to 36. Unfortunately, in today's world, people think that's not bad, but technically it's still obese and you should be much lower than this for all health studies. So 100 people, the duration was 16 weeks and people took 150 milligrams of dihydroberberine twice daily. So in the morning you take some and in the evening you take some. I take it right before two large meals and it stops that blood sugar spike, especially if you're diabetes. So you wanna be taking that, so 16 weeks, that's four months, the weight loss in the dihydroberberine group lost 15.9 pounds in a 16 week period. That is phenomenal. So in four months, you lose 16 pounds doing nothing except taking a cheap supplement that probably cost 80 bucks total. If I told you you could lose 16 pounds right now for 80 bucks, would you do it? It's probably a good deal. I'd take that, but again, it's not perfect and sometimes these studies are a little bit overhyped. The comparison group lost an average of 4.6 pounds. The reality is one type took dihydroberberine, one didn't. They both lost weight, but the dihydroberberine group lost a significant amount more of weight. Again, you know you're taking it, so maybe you change your diet habits. That's the problem with some of these studies. The weight loss in the dihydroberberine group statistically was significant. In measurements, the weight loss the waist circumference was a lot better. The blood sugar levels were a lot lower and there was an improvement in blood fatty levels. So the amount of cholesterol in your blood. And the reality is no one's gonna pay a lot of money for a low cost natural supplement, but Big Pharma will pay a lot of money for a thousand dollar per month medication that they wanna make available to everybody. So study number two, dihydroberberine and insulin sensitivity. So my favorite uses of dihydroberberine are for people with high blood sugar and diabetes, which is related to body fat. The study title is dihydroberberine improves insulin sensitivity and reduces glycemic variability in type two diabetes. This was published in the Diabetes Care Journal in 2017, and it looked at 75 adults with type two diabetes for 12 weeks. The dosage was 100 milligrams of dihydroberberine three times per day. So same thing as the previous study, 300 milligrams broken up into two or three dosages. The results after 12 weeks, which is three months, showed a 30% improvement in insulin sensitivity. What that means is they had to take their hemoglobin A1C, which is your average blood sugar level over three months, decreased by 1.2%, which is huge. That's actually huge because normally like 6.5 or 6 is pre-diabetic 
and that's where you start seeing those symptoms. They say you should be under six now, although that number is always changing a little bit. I don't know what it is exactly today or at this time of the video, but it's in that range. The comparison group, the placebo showed no significant levels. So this was compared. 75 patients overall had a significant drop in blood sugar levels. As a result, we know that's related to fat loss as well, and the study showed that as well. Study number three, dihydroberberine and cardiovascular health. This looked at cardioprotective effects of dihydroberberine in patients with metabolic syndrome. This was published in 2016 in the Journal of Cardiology. There was 90 adults with metabolic syndrome, and the duration was 24 weeks. The dosage was 200 milligrams of dihydroberberine twice daily. So this was a higher dosage, 200 earlier, 200 later. And this was for 24 weeks. So that's a long period of time. That's almost half a year. The results showed a significant reduction in total cholesterol by 18% and LDL cholesterol, which is the bad one, by 20%. The blood pressure also dropped by 10 blood pressure points on average. There was weight loss seen and in the comparison group showed no significant weight loss and no significant changes in blood markers. This is a clear win for dihydroberberine. Not as potent as taking one of the injectable expensive medications, but the result is clear and it's relatively safe and relatively effective. Study number four. This one was titled the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties of dihydroberberine in chronic inflammatory diseases. This was published in the Journal of Inflammation in 2019. 60 adults with chronic inflammatory conditions took dihydroberberine for 12 weeks. This was 150 milligrams of dihydroberberine twice daily, so 300 total milligrams during the day. There was a much lower level of C-reactive protein and interleukin-6. These are both inflammatory markers, 25 and 30%. There was less antioxidant enzyme activity by 35%. That's actually pretty impressive. I gotta start taking more of this stuff. The comparison group showed no significant changes in inflammatory markers or oxidative stress. So again, this is half a year, but you're talking like 20, 30% improvement in your whole body inflammation. That's unbelievable if it's true. And this is a pretty natural thing that they're not selling as a big pharma group. You know, these supplement manufacturers probably don't have the money to pay for these studies, but Big Pharma does. These studies further show the benefits of dihydroberberine. It has some good evidence in weight loss, insulin sensitivity, cardiovascular health, and I'm going to cheat in this video. Not really cheat because I think it's completely fair, but we know that dihydroberberine turns into berberine once it's absorbed through our gut. So essentially, the benefit of dihydroberberine versus berberine is you can take much less, like 50% less, of the dihydroberberine and get double the effect of berberine. So all the bigger studies over time of berberine, we can also count as dihydroberberine. I want to show you the specific dihydroberberine, but I think the berberine studies are even greater because we've known about berberine much longer than dihydroberberine. But now we have dihydroberberine. It's easier to make as a supplement. The cost is lower because you can take less of it. What these models show is that you have a 25% reduction in blood sugar levels in six weeks in mammals such as mice. You have increased insulin sensitivity by 35% in an eight-week study. You have better fat mass. You have lower triglyceride levels, less cholesterol, less inflammation in your blood vessels, and a 20% reduction in fat over a 12-week period. In my opinion, this seems a little bit too good to be true, but look at the prices on dihydroberberine. And I do link some options below. You don't have to buy for me, but it does help support the channel, so I appreciate you. Dihydroberberine is relatively low cost. These are not expensive things. I have a lot of patients taking all these expensive medications, they do work better. Like those things completely kill your appetite. They stop food from basically traveling through your gut. But there is some significant side effects with those two. For example, gas, bloating, it can basically cripple and explode your stomach for some people where you can barely move. So that's stuff to think about too. This is not as powerful as those prescription medications, but it is fairly well proven in a lot of studies. And in my opinion, dihydroberberine is the better option 
than berberine. How much berberine per day? The appropriate daily dosage of dihydroberberine can vary depending on the individual health goals, but specifically most people watch this for weight loss and lowering blood sugar levels. All the studies that I have seen take about 100 or 150 or 200 milligrams once or twice per day. So almost all the studies I looked at vary between 200 to 300 total dihydroberberine per day. This provides an effective dose to get all the results such as blood sugar control, insulin sensitivity, weight loss. This is really the way to go. If you want to look at dihydroberberine for weight loss, check out this video on the benefits and recommendations of choosing a dihydroberberine supplement and all the tips and tricks how to use it, including the proper dosages. Check that out right here.